Yeah, and that leads into my next question, which is uh, we were in New York together last year for, uh, for a meeting, and uh, there was a pretty dynamic conversation about on-prem versus cloud. And, and it was interesting to me because there's so much hype around the cloud, and, and there is a lot of practical applications for the cloud, but, but you were sitting there going, not for everything. And, and, you were, and, and it was interesting to see that, that conversation. You know, what drives a decision for, for you in one direction or, an, or another, on-prem versus cloud? Of course. So again, this, this is my personal opinion. Every healthcare has their, their own ways of doing different things. What, what I believe is cloud is a great place to, to have a scalable solution. So if you want to migrate something to the cloud and you want that scale and you want that resources, you, that agility on demand, you can definitely go to the cloud. But remember, cloud was really sexy five years ago because data analytics has not matured. Once data analytics has matured, people started thinking, oh, I put this application on that cloud, that application on that cloud. Now I have to pull all my data back so I can get rich analytics. So you have to be extremely careful where you put your data in your application and in your business. Are you going to do analytics? Are you going to mix and match that analytics with something that you have on-prem? If that's gonna happen, then you have to pull all the data back and mix it with your on-prem data and have a richer data analytics. And if you want to move forward with predictive analytics, you gotta be very close to the data. The minute data changes, you gotta capture that change and see how that, that analytics changes tomorrow, day after tomorrow, hourly. So predictive analytics can't, it, it's, it's, a, it's a newspaper versus dot com. So you gotta decide what you want. Yeah, it, 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 I mean, where that conversation ended up going was just, you have to understand the benefits of both. Absolutely. And, you know, and one of the things that we ended up talking about there was the, the need for an abstraction layer at the, you know, we have abstraction layers between compute storage and, and the software now so that we can, you know, we can move those virtual environments all over. And that is really powerful. But now we need an abstraction layer at the cloud layer, so the multi-cloud essentially. And we end up talking about how important that is because you don't want vendor lock-in. Absolutely. You know, people move this data in. What's this? I mean, I, I read some of these contracts. People move the data in, and then all of a sudden they're like, hey, we have this really cool analytics things we're going to do. And they go, oh, well, it's not going to work. We'll just pull the data out. And they realize, oh, my gosh, it's going to cost us almost double right. the amount to get the data out as it costs us to put it in. Absolutely. Absolutely. So no, now you have data in four or five different places. So you're absolutely right. Having, having a, a, a great, great layer where you can, you can containerize your workloads and swing between your cloud, somebody else's cloud, migrate. Now, the, the, the cloud providers are also getting really, really clever and they said, hey, our cloud has this special one thing that no other cloud. So you, you can containerize your workload, but still you will be dependent on a particular feature that only one cloud has. So they are trying to keep you but as a technologist, you have to be clever enough to make sure that they don't lock you. 